So it's all very good to say that India will emerge as the third largest aviation market after USA and China. But the question is, will the airlines still be profitable? Under the difficult circumstances, aviation industry is facing, in particular, the airlines are facing due to a variety of reasons, which you explained very well, uh, how Indian-based carriers can become world brand carriers. You know, let's put it, let's go back into history. When there was only Air India and Indian Airlines operating, they were expanding and they were serving the social purpose. A lot of social government said, fly to this destination because it helps boost tourism and everything was taking place. But ever since the open skies policies, private airlines have been running the, their businesses purely on commercial consideration. Now, as I said earlier, it's the business environment that must be right. But then the discipline has to come from within the airline. Am I going to chase a passenger or will the seats be chasing passengers? So you've got to look at from the fact, how am I putting my fares? But then, since a lot many new promoters have been coming and they haven't stayed on for very long, the non-aeronautical revenue of the airlines needs to be boosted, which isn't really happening. We know that the airports are charging landing, parking fees, etc. State governments are putting a hefty sale tax on ATF. Central government is putting service tax on the ticket sold. All these factors add up. So if you really analyze the ticket value that a passenger pays, what percentage of it goes to the airline is to be looked at. There are security agencies being paid, you know, everything that right. happens. But what airlines need to do is to take a long-term perspective. You can't take your decision based on short-term returns that I must garner market share irrespective of the consequences. And take, for example, the latest entry in Takata airline. You come into the market, you want to add one aircraft every 15 days in an environment where the fuel prices are high, the market is not growing at the way it should have been growing because of various factors. Now, are you going to get 85, 90% to get returned? So the cash burn has been huge. And then, of course, has been, as is very evident, that India lacked expertise. And this is best demonstrated, conclusively established, is that a large number of Indian carriers have foreign CEOs. They haven't come from within the industry. Okay. Now, of course, Akasa Airline can be said to be an exception, but don't forget that Vinay Dubey had worked abroad. Okay. So when you have an Indian heading, whether it was the Runajoy Datta of Indigo, etc., they had all had their grounding in foreign airlines. So a time will come when there will be managerial people going up in the airlines hierarchy with airline background of India. So they need to get up on technology, get on to areas where the cost can be reduced. Don't try and expand your network to such a level or increase the number of frequencies. Said, I will make money. Others may not make money. Or my predecessor may have made money. I will not make mistake without realizing that Indian market environment needs to be studied in depth. The weaknesses cannot be removed by an airline management. They go beyond the airline. The government has to do it. The passenger psyche has to change. Everything has to work out. So unless airlines get the value for the seats that they are putting in, you can neither have a sustainable model nor can they build up a big brand. It will be a well-known brand. So it's all very good to say that India will emerge as the third largest aviation market after USA and China. But the question is, will the airlines still be profitable? Or will we keep with the saying the demise of one airline or the other? So there are weaknesses which have to be attended to. 
It's been three decades since the private airlines were allowed, which is a fairly long period. I hope lessons will be learned. And India will have fewer airlines, but financially stronger airlines. How important is uh, development of airport infrastructures in India? Personal observation is that we require more ups in Northeast and the Eastern parts of India uh, to have intercontinental flight operation. How far the airport uh, infrastructure to be developed? How soon? Let also? me explain in detail. The fact is, you can't ignore it, that India has to have a large number of airports. There are a whole lot of countries in the world which are city countries, you know, one airport country like Hong Kong, Singapore, they have only one airport, so they can invest all the money in one airport, make it a world-class airline. 30, 40 years ago, or even 25 years ago, the government mindset was that aviation industry is for the rich and the super rich. The elitist sector into this thing, so money need not be invested. But once the realization dawned that airline industry is a must for tourism and to act as a catalyst for growth, the perspective changed. So we started having larger airports. The privatization of airports took place. Now we can count some of our airports as among the best in the world. Now they have become hubs, but not in the true sense of the term. Because, like, for example, if Air India operates out of Delhi, a large chunk of its international flights, jet airways were operating out of Mumbai. But we need to set up, look, Air Asia had a hub in Bangalore. Now we need to get on to it and say, look, this airline will ensure that it operates bulk of its flight from this airport, like we have it in the United States of America. Then you will see an all round growth. But government's perspective as of today is, that if there are 70, 80 good airports, main cities, sub-city, main sub-metros, etc., they are trying to work on 200 plus airports, which have only airstrips, which weren't being used. So they are planning to get Uran flights to use the airstrips. So the fund constraint has been a factor in the past, but now a lot of private airlines, private companies are taking over the airports or are setting up new airports. So once the infrastructure develops, like, for example, the Prime Minister inaugurated the airport in Meghalaya, one of the northeast states, only yesterday. Now, when you have this kind of a thing taking place, there is growth taking place, but at a relatively slower pace. Now, we had a system that one airport is good enough. Now, Delhi, for example, has the big airport and then another one is coming up in Oida. So the realization has come in that you can't have congestion. Air, air, airlines can't be told, we can't give you a slot, landing slot at this airport simply because there are constraints. So with the emergence of the new aviation policy, and let's not forget the, the fact that it took roughly 25 years for the government to evolve up aviation policy, civil aviation. And now that we are moving on it at high speed, the takeoff will be smooth, takeoff will be fast, and you'll find a lot of international airlines coming in. They already, they made a beeline for it, if you remember, but that was largely because the Indian carriers weren't flying abroad. Now, bulk of the Indian carriers, where are they flying? Gulf and Southeast Asia. Barring Air India, and to some extent Vistara, no airline is operating flights to Europe, states, or to Japan. So once you have hubs created, then you will find airports being developed, airlines developing, which will have a major stake in the growth of air traffic in that region. But the hub concept has to come in. Yeah, actually, I wish to refer in this contest, especially from South India, where a lot of uh, travelers bound for Europe and uh, USA, they always go via foreign carriers, either to Doha or Dubai, southern region. Uh, most of the Greenfield airports have come, like uh, Hyderabad, Bangalore. Bangalore recently also they opened a second terminal. So I wish that Chennai, the Greenfield airport, comes as per schedule in 2000. You know, let me explain to you. Let's not forget or overrule the fact that more than 50% of the airports, international airports in India, are in South India. 
Okay. Kerala leading the south. You have Chennai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, all having, and Telangana, all having very good airports. And they've developed. Let's not also overlook the fact that a good many international airlines and Air India have announced commencement of break flight to the United States from these southern airports. You see, we should not be judging our market from what has happened in the past. As I said, we have been constantly evolving. Airlines are realizing the potential. Professional managements know where to deploy the capacity and where they will garner more revenue. So it is not just international airlines which are operating flights from the southern airports, but Air India has a large business plan okay. to operate direct flights. There's no reason why Bangalore should not have had a direct flight to San Francisco, one Silicon Valley to another. Like, as you said, that when you want to fly to London or to fly to the United States, why shouldn't direct flight be available? But they're coming in. Indian carriers were not enthusiastic on long haul aircraft. So in India, unfortunately, had to recklessly or under for consideration, etc., give bilateral rights to Gulf carriers, Singapore Airlines, Southeast Asian carriers, Etihad, Qatar Airways, etc. But now that Air India does not have a fund constraint under a private owner, okay. that's why they've been able to announce so many new flights. They are taking new aircraft on lease, pending placing an order for aircraft owner on ownership basis. But the growth is going to be there. And as you very rightly said, the, the growth can only come from areas which haven't fully been exploited in the past. And southern region is one such. Okay, your statement is very encouraging that uh, Air India has planned long haul flights from southern region. Sir, as a former executive director holding high position in Air India, rather you can say the s Air India, given an opportunity, what will be the suggestion for the present Air India under Tata Sense or Thales Private Limited? You see, you cannot avoid a mention of Air India's past. Being a government airline with a board that was not necessarily professional or the airline being run by the bureaucrats in Delhi, there were problems and problem galore. The decision making has to be quick. The technology absorption has to be fast. Growth has to be sustained. Now, you can't say, if I buy aircraft, I'll buy 100 aircraft. But I will not stagger them. So under Tata's, you're going to get a professional management. And you've got the person who has a perspective of experience of running an airline. And you know that you have to grow. You have to represent the sentiments of the country. Because Air India, in the eye of the public, still kind of thing raises in nostalgia. The everybody wants to Air India to do well. And no better owner than Tata's who had originally founded the airline. And they have got a business plan. They've got deep pockets. Now you can't say, look, I will not recruit people because I have no money to pay the salaries. I will not take aircraft on lease or grow my network because I have no money. I cannot have aircraft on ground for want of payment to these vendors, people, to the company which supplies spare parts. Now, when you have a private owner who optimizes utilization of men and machines, expands the network on commercial consideration, this city will give me business. I should give more flights. Why is the competition taking away India originating traffic from India through their hubs in Southeast Asia or Gulf and, and denying Air India or an Indian carrier the right? So there are certain positives that you look at. And over the next two years, not just their ambitious plan of accounting for 30% of the domestic market, collectively of all airlines under Tata's, but international markets, to grow worldwide. There's no reason why United States, you have five destinations there, but all flights originating either from Delhi or Mumbai. 
Why not from Bangalore? Why not from Hyderabad? Why not from Kerala? Why not from Chennai? So they are going to exploit the market. Okay, the private airlines were doing or the global airlines were doing, but India was not doing. So I see a very, very bright future for Air India under the Tatas. It's not just that they are driven by the emotions that, oh, JRD Tata had founded the airline. That time, Air India was the world-class airline and we want to make it again. But the fact is the dynamics of markets have changed. The realization of the changes have to be taken into consideration in decision-making. So the experience, the new management team, the vision that you have, the potential of Indian market that exists needs to be exploited. And no better than a combination of Air India under the House of Tatas. So I'm very sanguine about it, that we are here to see, it's not just that the Air India would change its scenario for itself, but the whole Indian aviation will get a boost worldwide. Having said that Tatas will ensure a brighter future for Air India in the coming years, let's not also overlook the fact that Tata, before bidding for Air India under the dis for the disinvestment, had done a proper due diligence. It saw value in Air India, Air India's large global network, pilots, aircraft, train manpower being available. So Air India should be looked at from this perspective that while there may have been weaknesses, but it's given a platform to Tatas under their private ownership to make Air India an airline a world class. So we shouldn't overlook the role that Air India has played. And as I said earlier, the industry has been evolving and Air India was set up in the 1950s. And so that was a time when there were various governments thinking on the airline, et cetera. But now that we have a professional setup and ecosystem, that's conducive for growth. So good luck to Air India under the Tatars. Mr. Jitendra Bhargava, my final question. You were holding so many portfolios as a director in Air India. And you were also a keen observer, critic, still the most sought after uh, by the media to take opinion from you. What is the message you like to give to G Chris TV viewers on the aviation scenario? You see, one has to understand the Indian aviation, the changes that are taking place. If anybody is under the impression that what exists in the current environment is a perfect one, I would disagree with it. Whether it's the Ministry of Civil Aviation, presently manned by the bureaucrats, I would love to see technocrats, aviation background people being in the aviation industry, who understand what the airlines want. I want the promoters of airlines to see the industry as a whole and not from their own perspective. Because if you want to be harmful to the other industry and you are in a commanding position, you can always lower the fares and force the other airline to not be able to make money and lose out in the short term or the long term for that matter. Then, of course, are the customers, the passengers who are flying, they've got to be realistic. You cannot have a situation where you pay virtually 30 to 50 percent of the fare only in commuting from your house to the airport in Bangalore. You must look at the fares on a per kilometer basis. We call it yield in the aviation industry rupee earned per kilometer of passenger flown. Now, if it is going to be lower than your auto rickshaw flying in a city, now you can't have it both ways. That I want to travel by air with all the comforts and benefits given to me, but I don't want to be paying that kind of fare. Airlines are doing their utmost because of the competition to keep the fares as competitive and as modest as possible. But you can't be forcing them because unlike any other industry, 
in aviation industry, seats are a perishable commodity. In any other industry, you can sell a product if it doesn't get sold today, the next day. But in airline industry, if the seat is vacant and the plane takes off, the value is zero. So airlines at times are compelled to sell at a lucrative rate, read low fares. That's not a healthy sign. We don't want to see airlines folding up periodically. And as I said earlier, we must pay heed to what J.R.D. Tata had said. Let's have a few strong airlines rather than many but weak airlines. That will be my concluding message because we all are well wishers of the aviation industry. We want the industry to be prosperous, but then all stakeholders have a role to play. That was Mr. Jitendra Bhargava, known for his articulation, clarity. He has given a clear picture on the aviation scenario in India. His considered opinion, suggestions, I hope the concerned authorities, agencies take seriously part of Indian economy to grow into trillions. Aviation plays a major role. I thank Mr. Jitendra Bhargava for sparing your time. On behalf of G Chris TV, I thank you.